just clicked on the garner. Today we're going to show you how to turn a magneto into a distributor. I see it sparking. Okay, see that spark right there? Yep, I saw it. Okay, I'm going to turn the light back on. Debbie's nice enough at me to come into the kitchen and do this video today. A little hot over in the shop. Well, I started that with, I got a brand new one here. Mm-hmm. Fairbanks Morse Magneto. Mm-hmm. Anyway, the reason I got that, a lot of cases had them old Fairbanks Morse on them. Uh-huh. And there's an old boy, let me unhook my hot water here. Yeah, you better. There's an old boy over in Newton, Kansas. Uh-huh. He's tractor trader, equipment dealer and that. Got him a little family business, nothing mm -hmm. real big. Mm -hmm. And he's, for personal reasons, he's having to sell a big collection of tractors that he's collected up over the year, old vintage, classic tractors, whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. And he likes cases. And he had an old case on there and the magnet has quit firing on him. Mm -hmm. And he said it had cost about $900 the time he sent it off and paid the shipping and got it brought back and everything and fixed into where to start this tractor. And I've run on that before. And what I'll do is I wire up a coil on them. And what I've done, uh -huh. I'll take this mag loose here for a second. Mm -hmm. I've gutted that mag. I see. Okay. Here's a coil that came out of it. Okay, there's the coil. There's a little wire that went from the coil over to the kill switch. See that little spring? Hold it steady. Yeah. Little rusty spring? Yep, I see it. You ground the, the coil out to kill it. Okay. Anyway, and here's the cap off of it. Okay, cap. Okay, and what I did... Okay, what'd you do? I just run a hot wire from right here. This red wire. Mm -hmm. And I run it to the outside here, and I run through that hole where that other wire was bolted on. Uh -huh. I run that to the positive side of a 12-volt coil. 12-volt coil. Okay. From the negative side of that coil, uh -huh. I mean, I run that to the negative side. Okay. The minus side goes to your distributor. You your better distributor. get it right now. Yep. The positive side, I've run down here. Oh, yeah, I see it. A positive. To you're, the positive of the cable. You're a goober. This green wire right here. Mm hmm. That's fastened on right here to the back. Okay. That's just ground. That's just a ground. Okay. If you got your battery grounded to your engine, you won't need to run an individual ground over to it. That's just to ground it out right now. Uh huh. Okay, y'all seen that sparking? Yes, I saw it sparking. Okay, and the way to get, you got your rotor. When you put that mag on there, you'll want to turn that rotor to wherever you want number one terminal to be. I never do worry about that kind of stuff. I just put it on where, turn it over top dead center and wherever number one's pointing, that's where I stop number one. Okay. But what I've did, every Delco coil, Mm -hmm. If you can look down at the center of that, I don't know if you can see that or not, right down in the center of that hole. Okay. S see that screw in there? Yeah, I see a screw. Screw in a brass piece, right there. Uh-huh. I've took that out of a Delco coil. Your magneto, send it through here, and it'll come down to the center of this deal. I just drilled a hole on here outside uh -huh. and screwed that in or took that out of a Delco coil. And what that'll be for... Don't push on me. ...is my coil wire. Uh-huh. Which is 10 miles long. It'll fit right there. And you can put a boot over that and some silicone around it. Uh-huh. But that gets the spark mm -hmm. from here to the center here. Uh -huh. And your little rotor sends it out to each of the four cylinders. Uh -huh. It's real simple. Real simple. Yeah. I mean... And you ain't got to worry about taking the impulse out of that. I'm going to have to clamp that back to the board because when I crank on it, it'll jump around. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Hold this water, Debbie. How about I shove it down your pants? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she wasn't born yesterday. <laughs> How 
about I grab it? And see how it? big that and bright that spark is? That I start. See it. I Even see that propane tractor. I see it. That's a good one. Wow. Okay. Wow. Once you do that, okay, once you then. Okay, then. You've got to put your ignition switch between your hot wire and on off switch between your hot wire and your battery. Uh huh. And somewhere in this line, uh -huh. this hot wire, this line, yes. you need to put a resistor like this. Okay, a resistor. Between your battery and your positive side of your coil, you need a resistor. Okay. A Ballast right. resistor, they call it. Ballast resistor. And what that does, that keeps that coil from overheating and burning up. Okay. Now, Dokey pokey. What I like to do. What do you like to do? From my hot side of my battery so to one terminal here, uh -huh. another one goes down to the starter. You got two poles here. Uh huh. One of these. North pole, south pole? No, they're just poles, electrical poles. Oh, electrical and, poles. Anyway, one of these, when you hook it up, you put electricity to it, uh -huh. it'll crank the engine over. And I use a little start button. Wire that up. It's not working. One, I know. One wire that goes there. Uh-huh. Another wire will go to your hot side. Okay. And that'll 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 crank the engine over. Mm-hmm. The second pole, mm -hmm. I like to run a wire direct from it, bypassing my ballast resistor. Okay, bypassing that. Yep. Go directly to the hot side of your coal. Okay. That way when you're cranking it over, you is get... Is the negative you're hot or the positive you're hot? Your positive's are hot, negative is your... Well, you need to get on the other side because the other side you're positive. Do I have that hook up backwards? I don't know. No, that's positive. The red one's po This one's positive, this red one right okay, here. Well, okay, well, I see an X right there. Yeah, okay, that's positive. Okay, but I go directly from there to the positive side of the coil, mm -hmm. bypassing that resistor. Okay. And what that does when it's... Cranking over. Uh -huh. When it's the starter's turning, uh -huh. you're getting a full 12 volts to your coil uh -huh. to start it. And as soon as you quit cranking, the 12 volts goes back to resistance. Okay. Uh, a lot of cars and trucks, like old Chevy pickups made in the 60s, uh -huh. instead of having a ballast resistor, had a resistance wire. And from the starter, they would, there's a purple wire goes down the starter to the side of the solenoid that cranks it. Mm -hmm. And there was a yellow wire come back up and went to the coil mm -hmm. to give it to pull 12 volts when it was starting. Wow. But anyway, that's a simple operation. Anybody can do it. And there's two screws that go in right to the top through here. Uh -huh. You pull them out and this coil will fall right out. You can take that coil out. And this piece right here, the sticks here, this brass piece, uh -huh. you can cut that off. Uh, what I generally do is stick a piece of vacuum hose over it. Oh. Just put a piece of hose over it. Uh -huh. And you ain't hurt nothing. Okay. But you see, you can put a boot right over the top of that yep, on you your wire you if sure you want can. to. You sure but can. that'll make that work. Mm -hmm. And I'm mainly doing this to help Crazy D. He's got all that equipment stuff he's gonna have it on I think a purple wave auction so if y'all are looking for some old classic kind of tractor and stuff he's got them over there that he's collected up that he's got for sale yes he's gonna be selling and them I think for health reasons he's needing some money and that'll help him mm -hmm. anyway I'm gonna hook this up one more time one more time yeah one more and what I'm using for a switch. And I'm going to take that wire. What I'm and using for a switch is a clothespin. <laughs> that's okay. You can use a clothespin. Just dang, hold them two wires together. Can I take that black wire and, and touch your touch your back? Do that, what? Can I take that sparkly wire and touch it to your back? To my back? Yeah, to your back. Why? To see you jump. You see me jump? Uh huh. Well, I'm jumping without you doing that. Okay. You really don't make me jump. Okay, jump. Jump, jump. It's not doing nothing. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh-oh. Why are you doing anything? Because you didn't put the lime in the coconut and shake it all up. Must not be making good contact, really. <laughs> or your battery done went dead. Oh, there. It, it's, it's, I saw a spark once. Battery may be dead. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Your battery. 
The battery's about dead. You've only got two start batteries, and you done started this a couple, well, tried to start it a couple of times. Which is right here. Oh, is that right there? Are you using another one of my clothespins? No wonder I can't find my clothespins. Are they all over uh, at the store? No, they ain't all over at the store. Where are they? I don't know where they are. <laughs> Well, I'm afraid. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. You just had it too yeah, far I'm away. Yeah, real slow. Yep. There he goes. Yay. That's enough spark for anybody. Not enough for me. Well, let's see. I want, I want some pretty spark. Come here, I got a job for a boy. I don't do it. He's gonna he's gonna turn you into I want you to hold this wire. He's gonna turn you into a french fry. Try to get grandkids to come over here and hold this wire, but they're too smart. <laughs> I guess that'll be all for this and we'll say goodbye and good luck to you and hope that helps somebody. Why did Cliff dress me up like this? Because you know, you're this handsome. Kid. No, Grab you this make wire. Him hold touch. this wire. Don't you make him touch that. Ah! Don't do it. He's going to twist it and it's going to make a spark. Papa, you wouldn't. Oh, it's making a spark. It's making against the doohickey. The sea clam. Yeah, that's about a half inch. Whoa. Yeah. Well, okay, goodbye. Good luck to you. Well, I got a little story. Oh. I forgot. Oh, you've got a story. So do I. Probably about... Close to 35 years ago, I was working on a road construction job. That an old D88 there, pony start. And every morning that thing didn't want to start. So I'd go down there and I'd drive my pickup down there where I was at and put the booster cables on. It had a 12 volt starter on it. Battery wasn't very good to its own there. My truck was warmed up because I drove to work, so I'd pull two plugs, the two spark plugs out of the pony motor, and they were the same size as the spark plugs in my pickup. I'd take two hot plugs out of my pickup, and I'd put in that pony motor, and start my pickup up there, and boost it, and I'd get that old pony motor to start. Had a mag on it. We didn't run good. Sounded like halftime only hit on one cylinder while he was trying to start that old D8, old big six cylinder engine. I'd get her started and tell everybody don't shut that off during the day. Just let it run. It'll be all right. Anyway, one day the boss was there. I said something. We ought to put a coil on that mag, make it into a distributor. Maybe that thing will start in the morning. Next day, I wasn't there for some reason. I was off in the semi truck moving equipment. I don't guess. I guess he had a heck of a time getting that old D8 started that morning. And I showed him the next day when I showed up at quitting time. He come brought me that mag off that old D8, and he said, "Take that home and fix it." <laughs> so I turned the door on the distributor. Well, I had an old guy running that dozer. He was older than I am now. I think he's about 80, old Rayburn was. And I had the hardest time in the world teaching him to turn that ignition switch off after he started it because with a magnet, everybody always left the mag on the pony switch on, left the magnet switch on, turned the gas off, and let that motor run out of gas. And that's all he'd ever did and he'd run that old D8 since his new. And that's all he'd ever did, is turn that gas off the gas tank. He never ever turned the magnetic switch off, and I had the hardest time convincing him that he needed to start turning that switch I'd put on there off so that he wouldn't burn the coil and the points up. But finally, mate got him to understand that it wasn't a magnet anymore, and we didn't have no more trouble. But. My D4 pony motor, it, I've changed the mag over it to a coil. It just runs so much better with the coil. Now, which one? The, the crappy one over at Agony Acres or the one that's up on the hill? The one's up on the hill. Oh, okay. Anyway, uh, 
These magnets will go bad inside here. There's a magnet in there. It'll go bad in there, and the old one's got a little big old horseshoe type magnet. Mm -hmm. And there's a guy in Sweden, yeah. and I believe his channel name is Yesterday's Machinery. Mm -hmm. He showed how to make a coil and recharge a magnet on a and recharge that magnet and make it work. He's a pretty sharp old boy. But I like to watch his channels too. Mm -hmm. But anyway, Crazy D, here's your example of how to turn that distributor on that LAK mag in the distributor and get that thing to run. Mm -hmm. You'll have it run like a top again. Yay! Well, thank y'all, and I sure hope this helps you, Crazy D. Uh, thank y'all, and please like and subscribe and comment below. 